Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. Um, today's brain training session involves solving trigonometric problems. This is trigonometry number 10 in the course called Mass Plus and Problems presented on Unizor.com. Uh, Unizor.com is a totally free educational website. You can find prerequisite course which is called Math for Teens, and some other courses like uh, Physics for Teens, Relativity for All, and some others. Okay, so this is um, the course which is dedicated to solving problems, and this is the trigonometric, tr trigonometric problem, trigonometric number one, uh, number ten, I'm sorry. Okay, um, so let's get to business. Number one problem is as follows. I have to prove the following identity sine times tangent of half an angle is 1 minus cosine. But it's probably relatively easy to do it algebraically by, for example, converting sine and cosine into a tangents, tangent of half an angle. There are some formulas which we have derived in the course of trigonometry in that prerequisite course I mentioned, mass routines. But that's kind of a straightforward, not interesting, etc. I actually would like to um, prove this geometrically, well, at least for acute angles. And um, what I'm suggesting right now is to draw the following picture. Let's say you have some kind of acute angle, alpha. So I will do the following. I will do this, and I will do this. Now, if this is alpha, and if this is a unit circle, then the radius is 1, obviously. Now, what is this catalyst? Let's call this A, B, and C. So, what is OB? Well, OB is obviously cosine of alpha. That's basically the definition, right? Remember? The abscissa is cosine, and ordinate is sine. This is sine of alpha. Now, what I'm saying right now is and this is the beginning of this proof. This is alpha over 2. Now, for example, we have proven that this is alpha over 2. What follows? Well, if this OB is cosine, BC is obviously 1 minus cosine. If you will multiply sine, sine by tangent of this angle, and tangent is a ratio between this and this, BC and AB, then you will get the BC, obviously, right? AB times tangent of this angle is BC. So that would prove our um, identity. So all I have to prove that this is a, uh, BAC is alpha over 2. And that's what basically I would like you to, well, do it yourself. You stop the video right now, you pause it, and try to do it yourself. It's a very easy thing. However, it involves certain uh, additional logic, and uh, that's why I think it's very useful if you do it yourself. Okay, now I will basically continue proving this, and I will uh, prove it for you. Let me just continue this. Now, let's think about it. <coughs> this is perpendicular, right, to OC. So, if you will connect this, D, these are the same, and our arcs are the same, which means these two angles are the same this and this. So, this angle, BAC, is uh, supported by CD arc, which is exactly the same as AC. 
right? Because it's a perpendicular, you can very easily prove this. And again, try to do it yourself, but this is trivial. So, it looks like angle BAC or DAC, which is the same thing, is inscribed into circle. And it's supported by this angle, by, by this arc. Alpha angle is a central angle and it's supported by the arc of the same size. So, this is also obviously alpha. So it looks like COG, which is alpha, is central angle, which is supported by CB, and uh, CAD is inscribed into a circle angle, which is supported by exactly the same arc. And we know that inscribed angle uh, is always half of the cent central angle uh, if they are supported by the same arc. Well, prove it. If you don't really remember how to prove it, obviously go to the main course, which is uh, Mass for Teens, and that's where the proof is. But I would actually encourage you to prove it yourself. It's not very, uh, it's not very difficult at all. And that would prove that this uh, angle is alpha over two, half of a, half of angle, half of alpha. And basically everything else was already proven. So this is particular exercise where you have to really kind of uh, recall the definition of. Uh, sine and cosine and tangent. Uh, you have to recall geometrical properties of the angles uh, which are inscribed or central to a, a circle. So this is a nice problem which would probably um, help you to basically restore in your memory different pieces. But again, the more you prove yourself instead of basically referencing to some other theorems, the better you are off. Because what is the whole course of solving problems. That's the brain training, okay? So train your brain and uh, prove all these little things which I have basically <coughs> left, left to you. Okay, this is the first problem. Now, the second problem, and again, it's kind of a to, uh, to force you to recall certain things. It's about the in inverse um, trigonometric functions, arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, etc. So what I would like to do is, I would like to solve the equation, arc sine of x is equal to arc cosine of x. Well, it's very simple, however, again, it would require you to recall certain things. First of all, what's the definition of arc sine and arc cosine? Well, Arc sine of x is alpha angle. Such an angle that its sine is equal to x. That's number one. Number two, in this definition we really have to um, determine this angle more precisely because sine is um, <coughs> sine is the function which repeats its values after a certain period, it's a periodic function. You can always add 2 pi to an angle and the sine will be exactly the same. So, which particular angle is the one sine of x is equal, sine of its, of, it, of its angle is equal to x? Well, we have to define domain and codomain of the function sine. So, uh, an arc sine. Now, for the sine, we know what it is. This is a periodic function. So this is zero, this is pi, this is minus pi. Now, we need a piece of that function which is monotonic. So we know that we can always find uh, not only from argument the function, but also from function the argument. And the monotonic is probably from here to here. That's that's how we define from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So on this segment, function sine is monotonic and we can inverse it. So the, the uh, graph 
of uh, so this is one and this is minus one, right? So now we invert it. Function becomes an argument, the argument becomes a function. So it's from minus one to one. So this is sine and this is arc sine. And from minus pi over two to pi over two. So at minus one, the value of the sine is minus pi over two. So for arc sine, if the value is minus 1, then the function would be minus pi over 2. And it will be like this. So this function is arc sine, and this function only on this segment from minus pi to pi over 2 is a sign. So they are inverse to each other and if you remember their graphs are supposed to be symmetrical relative to, to bisector of the main, um, main angle. Okay, fine. Now what about cosine? Now the cosine, so let's start with the cosine from 0 to pi. This is where the cosine is monotonically decreasing, and that's how we define. So also from minus 1 to 1, but the function would be at 0, it's, my, it, it's 1, which means at 1, it's 0. Now, at pi over 2, it's 0, so at 0, it's pi over 2. So the function goes to this way. So this is arc cosine. Arc cosine. Now we need where they equal to each other. They're both defined on a segment of minus 1 to 1, that's the main. Their uh, values are always from um, uh, from minus pi over 2 to, to pi, actually, this is pi. And they are equal at this point. Now, obviously we all know that the sine of 45 degrees, which is pi over 4, equals to square root of 2 over 2. We remember that. And the same thing would be a cosine of 45 degrees, right? Because if this is triangle with 45 degrees, 45 degrees, right triangle, then the um, both scattered are equal to each other, so sine of this angle would be a ratio between this and hypotenuse cosine of this angle would be ratio of this catalyst to hypotenuse, but the catalysts are the same, so sine and cosine are the same, obviously. So, basically we have solved the problem. The solution to this is x is equal to square root of 2 over 2, and arc sine would be equal to pi over 4, and arc cosine would be equal to pi over 4. So we basically have solved the problem by guessing the result. Now, can it be obtained analytically? Well, obviously yes, and this is my last, basically, my, my, my last uh, step on this thing. Let's take sine of both things. Sine of arc sine, by definition, is x equals to sine of, of arc cosine of x. Now, Sine and cosine are related by obvious sine square plus cosine square equals to 1. So sine is equal to square root of 1 minus cosine square of arc cosine of x. But cosine of arc cosine is, by definition of arc sine, of arc cosine is x. So basically that x squared. <laughs> 
So from this, let's square both sides. x squared equals to 1 minus x squared. 2x squared equals to, uh, to 1. And x is equal to square root of 2 over 2. Now, I was very quick right now because there are pluses and minuses, as we know, if we are talking about this particular equation. And here I'm extracting the square root without the minus sign. Why I'm doing all this? Well, because I know that there is only one solution, and this solution is between 0 and 1. So that's basically I have completely disregarded uh, this, this, the second root of this equation, which is minus square root of 2 over 2. And here I put um, only plus, uh, because sometimes it depends on, angle, uh, de depending on the angle, it might be plus or minus. But in this particular case, I just took only plus because I know that the results should supposed to be between 0 and 1. Okay, that's it. That's the end of it. We, could, we have received exactly the same solution as we see, analytically, as we have guessed. <coughs> now, the third one is calculate the value of 3 arc sine of 1 quarter plus arc cosine of 11 sixteenths. Now, this calculation is not to enter this thing into some kind of a uh, formula, search engine, whatever, using your scientific calculator or anything like, like that. Not at all. Now, you're supposed to analytically come up with answer, and the answer is very nice, by the way. Um, now, the, the answer is pi over 2. Angle is pi over 2, 90 degree. So, basically, let me just formulate this problem differently. Uh, proof that this is equal to pi over 2. And you cannot prove it uh, using any kind of calculator because calculators will give you approximate value. Now this is an exact value of this. So that must be proven analytically. So question is how? Well, again, we will just use um, the, the same approach which we were using in the previous problem try to do it analytically by taking sine of this thing and if sine is equal to 1 then we can basically uh, say that this sum is equal to pi over 2. Now, why? Well, for a very simple reason. Let's just draw again both graphs as we did before. So one is this, another was uh, this, right? So this is pi this is pi over 2, and this is 1, minus 1, 1, 0. Same thing as the previous graph. So this is arc cosine, this is arc sine. Now, uh, 1 quarter is something here, uh, 11 sixteenths is something here. So these are two values. Um, 3 times this plus this would be some, something something here, more or less. So it, it, it's a positive angle, all right? Somewhere between 0 and pi. Well, actually, it's between 0 and pi over 2 if you draw it a little bit more precisely. I do have, by the way, a precise graph on the, on the website where I present this problem. I have a, a nice graph, and you will see it. So basically, it's supposed to be, obviously, some kind of a positive angle. So, if you will um, uh, get that the sine of pi over 2 is equal, the sine of this angle is equal to 1, um, there is basically no, uh, uh, I mean, yes, there is no other way but to have it as a pi over 2, okay? Because if sine is equal to, this is sine, so if sine is equal to, to 1, it's either pi over 2, or plus or minus period 2 pi, which is definitely beyond the uh, values of this. So it's definitely would be a proof. 
Okay, so let's just do it. Let's have a sign of this thing and see if it's equal to 1. So let's call alpha is equal to arc sine of 1 quarter and beta is equal to arc cosine of 11 sixteenths. That's easier not to carry the whole big deal. So from definition we know that sine of alpha is equal to 1 4. That's the definition of arc sine. Now, how about cosine of alpha? Cosine of alpha will be equal to square root of 1 minus sine square. Uh, so it's square root of 1 minus 1 16. So it's square root of 15 divided by 4. Am I right? <coughs> yes. Now, sine of beta is equal to, again, square root, now we know that cosine of beta is equal to 11 16, so the sine of beta would be equal to 1 minus square root of cosine, um, uh, so it's 1 minus uh, 121 to 56, it's square root of uh, 135 over 16, 135 is 9 times 15, square root of 9 is 3, so it's 3 times square root 15 over 16. Okay, now we also need a uh, triple angle, we need sine of this, because whenever we will open sine of the whole thing, we will need sine and cosine of triple angle. Alright, so I don't remember obviously the formula for sine of triangle, so let's do it here sine of 3 alpha is equal to sine of 2 alpha plus alpha, right? But I do remember the, fo the formula for sine of 2, uh, of uh, sum of two angles. It's sine of this times cosine of that, uh, uh, plus cosine of this and sine of this. Okay, so sine of 2 alpha, that's 2 sine alpha cosine alpha times cosine alpha. So I put it square. Plus <coughs> cosine of 2 alpha, which is cosine square minus sine square, or 1 minus sine square minus 2 sine square of alpha, uh, times sine alpha. Okay, now Cosine square I would also change to 1 minus sine square. So I will have only sines. So it's 2 sine uh, and sine. So it's 3 sine alpha minus 2 sine cube and minus 2 sine cube, minus 4 sine cube alpha. Okay, fine. Now cosine, yeah, and let's just calculate the value of this. Uh, it's 3 sine alpha, sine alpha is 1 quarter, times 3, minus 4, uh, one quarter cube is one sixteenth, uh, one sixty four. So it's three quarter minus uh, one sixteenth. This is twelve eleven sixteenths. Okay. Now, cosine of three alpha is equal to if I know sine. I will use square root of 1 minus 11 square, 16 square, 1 minus corresponding sine square, which is, well, that's something which is exactly the same as this one. So it would be uh, 256 minus 121, 135, yes, that's exactly the same thing, 3 square root of 15 over 16. Now I have all the components I need to calculate sine of that thing. So sine of 3 alpha plus beta is equal to sine of 3 alpha times cosine beta. 
sine of 3 alpha is equal to 11 sixteenths times cosine beta. Cosine beta is 11 sixteenths plus cosine of 3 alpha, which is this, which is this, 3 square root of 15 over 16 times sine of beta. Sine of beta is exactly the same thing. 3 square root of 15 over 16 equals 121 plus um, 9 times 15, 135. Uh, 16 times 16, 256, which is equal to 1. 131 plus 135 is 256, so that's one. So as, we, as you see, we have proven that the sine of this is equal to 1, which means that the angle is equal to pi over 2. Okay, basically, that's it. What I suggest you to do is, right now, go to the website, unisor.com, choose the course, Mass Plus and Problems, choose the part of this which is called trigonometry, go to trigonometry number 10, and just you will have uh, well, both the lecture, which I have just uh, basically did, you saw it, and you have a textual description of this lecture, where there is a problem and solution. Well, sometimes there is a solution, sometimes there is no solution, but I would suggest you to basically do the problems yourself without reading the solution. And, well, basically that would be a very good exercise, again, brain training. That's the purpose of solving problems, okay? All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.